The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, we are going to get started. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining for our presentation on SharePoint Asset Tracking. And we will begin. Whoops, uh, give me one sec. There we go. I'm Will Cooper. I'm a SharePoint Solutions developer, and I uh, do a YouTube channel called SharePoint Smart. Uh, you can search and find that and get free information on how to do all kinds of cool things in SharePoint. Additional to that, um, I run a tool called SharePointDashboards.com. And after our main presentation, I will be doing an additional presentation. Um, so there's some bonus content um, after the first 30 minutes if you want to learn about that tool. About InfoWise, we like to make it simple and easy. Um, we're about helping you be able to have the tools and functionality that you need in SharePoint without having to do any coding. Um, so you don't have to be a developer, programmer, or um, SharePoint administrator to be able to use these tools. And we're all about improving. We're continuously adding new features and functions to make our product even better. Um, these are comprehensive solution tools, uh, Ultimate Forms, 100% um, working inside of your SharePoint interface. Um, you don't have to go into an external uh, tool set, as I mentioned, there's no code. At the end of our presentation, we are going to do a drawing for a free embroidered InfoWise shirt that's available to people that are located inside of the United States. Just some ground rules. Um, we are interested in your questions and feedback. And the way that you can do that is by using the GoToWebinar question interface. Please do enter your questions in there. Now, it may take time to get a response. Uh, typically, we'll handle some of those questions towards the end. So if you don't see a response right away, please be patient and absolutely your question will be answered and we will respond. So with that, we can go ahead and jump into our main presentation. Ultimate Forms is available both for SharePoint Online and also for on-premise SharePoint. So what I'll demonstrate today is workable um, for all versions of SharePoint. Just a metaphor I want to start with. This is how I think about uh, SharePoint out of the box. It's a bit limited. Um, it's a great platform and there are a lot of possibilities, but in order to get the most out of it and do everything you want to, Easily, you need a bit more. That's where Ultimate Forms comes in. This is an add-in, and this is how I think about it. It's a giant toolbox. It provides all kinds of additional capabilities and functions that are very useful, and it helps you build solutions in SharePoint to help your organization. All right, the topic at hand, asset tracking. Let's first discuss what we want in asset tracking before we actually go into the SharePoint solution. So here are 10 key features that should be a part of any asset tracking solution. First thing we want to know is for any given asset, where is it? Uh, you know, that's what we're looking for. You know, just like I'm looking for my wallet sometimes. We want to know where that's located. Who has it? You know, who was the last person to check it out? Who touched it? Um, who's using it right now? That type of thing. So who is an important question. Visuals are very important. It helps to have a picture and show what that looks like. A picture is worth a thousand words, as they say. Um, so incorporating images into your asset tracking tool is vital. It makes it much more appealing in terms of the user interface easier to comprehend, that's very important. What are the key attributes? These would be the make, the model, serial number, category, status. All of these are properties of that asset that we need. We need it for search capabilities, tracking, and to define exactly what that asset is. 
What's the history? In some cases, you may have tracking lists, and it just shows you a snapshot of the current state. But sometimes we're going to know um, some history. When did we purchase that item? Who checked it out last? What happened with it? Where was it a month ago? That type of thing. Having some logging to demonstrate the concept of what um, was the case before is really important. So we want to try to incorporate that as well. Email notifications. Uh, especially for key assets, we may want to get a notification when there's a status update, uh, when something gets checked out, um, or if there's some other kind of change with that, um, we might like to get uh, a notification. Scannable QR codes. Okay, QR codes aren't a new concept, but in many cases, it's not generally used in SharePoint. But in our solution, we want for the ability to put a QR code on the physical device, we can tape it on there, be able to scan that with their phone and have that open up this record in our asset tracking solution directly. Um, so a great way to connect um, that device with the solution without having to do a lot of extra steps. Searching, uh, especially when you begin to have lots of assets that you're tracking, you need to be able to find those assets quickly without having to go through a whole bunch of pages and things like that. So search tools are going to be really important to us um, and a good asset tracking solution. Mobile friendly. This should go without saying. Now, for a lot of us, we tend to use SharePoint on our desktop, but in the case of this solution, it's really important that we can move around, that I can walk back to a storage room and I'm not sitting on my computer at that point, but I do have my phone with me pretty much everywhere I go. I should be able to just uh, pull out my phone and use my phone to make updates, scan the QR code, to call up the record, that type of thing. So mobile friendly is certainly very important in an asset tracking solution. Uh, last is really about user interface. We wanna make sure that we have an attractive user interface. We wanna highlight those images. Uh, we wanna do things like have this task card view um, so um, we're displaying things in a way that's easy to digest, um, you know, in our display, not just the plain vanilla out of the box SharePoint view. Okay, so those are 10 concepts we want to hit. Let's see um, how much of that is incorporated in what we're going to look at. All right, here I am in SharePoint Online. And what we'll do is begin by looking at the tool from a user perspective. So I'm going to show you all the fun stuff first, and then we'll start to talk about how that's all put together. I do want to say, before I forget to mention, this solution that I'm showing is available to you for free, uh, along with the Ultimate Forms tool. So you can download it immediately after this presentation. This is a template which you can download and install. Everything I'm showing, uh, you can download and install in your own uh, SharePoint tenant um with our free trial which is 30-day trial which is our full tool set so um everything you see you can use it yourself uh later today all right so let's go to the assets list start there um this is the cards view i mentioned we're doing some special formatting for this this is what's referred to as view formatting at sharepoint it relates to my presentation um, after this, uh, which is about SharePoint dashboards, in which case I'll talk more about that. And um, first of all, I'll just show you the uh, update form. This is our main form view. Um, here's all those key fields, the attributes we talked about. Um, basically, you can tab through those fields, fill in that information. And when you do that, it's going to generate the uh, QR code for me. Um, so that's an existing asset. Um, but Let's just start right at the beginning. Let's enter an asset um, because clearly we want to be able to add assets very easily. All right. I think these new Pixel phones are kind of cool. And so I'm going to add one of those. The new Pixel 6. Okay. There's the image. You can see that loaded quickly. And I just gave a simple description to this. Um, uh, New work Pixel phone, that's a Google phone, Pixel 6. Okay, categories are important. It's going to help us with the 
uh, filters and sorting and searching and all that kind of stuff. So um, I've already defined those. You see, I've got some color icons to help dress up the user interface a little bit. Note that um, to speed up entry, we've defaulted the purchase date to the current date and the user to the current user, which is me. Um, I'm just going to make up a uh, serial number, you know, just because. Now that's optional. You know, you may not want to do serial numbers on everything. And then um, we're going to associate the item with the user. So I have that. And then for location, you know, you could put a uh, whatever city in a state or your office. So I could say main office. However you want to do it, but you know the 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 broad location where it is, and it's defaulting to uh, end use. And then notes is just a catch all field at the bottom. Okay, so I'll say my cool new phone. Um, send the email updates. That'd be for anybody who might want to be catching email updates whenever there's updates on that. So that's an optional use. Hopefully you would agree that was a pretty simple streamlined process. And then immediately, isn't that cool? I've got my new card, there's my new item. New work pixel phone. Okay, well, let's do it just one more time, just because, just to show this is fast and easy. All right, we're gonna add a monitor this time, a Dell 32 inch curved monitor. Dell curved monitor, it's a Dell. Um, I don't know what the, Model number is, I'll make one up. All right, that's not a camera. It's a monitor. Um, I've got one of those. Um, put some stuff in here. Whoops. And then, um, say so that's also in the main office. Whoops. Main office. All right. All right, save that. Okay, so obviously adding assets seems to be quick. Uh, now, what's important is to understand everything I'm showing here can be done on your phone. You can just use the browser on your phone. Generally, I prefer to use the Chrome browser, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android phone, it's gonna work just the same. Uh, you can go on that interface and add the assets right there. Now, what's really cool, I wanna demonstrate what's going on after the card gets added. You'll see the interface changes a little bit and there's more. There. Okay, so I've got this new, at the, there's a summary at the top, so it's a new work pixel phone, and then in parentheses, the status and use. Okay, so that's just a nice eye catching header. And what's this? We've got a QR code. Now, what's very cool about that QR, QR code, it's dynamically generated. And if I scan that with my phone, it will take me directly to the form that you're looking at. So that's super cool. All right. Now, at this stage, um, you know, we may have something that's shared. And so a check-in, check-out process can be useful. So we have that, um, these functions in here, and this is indicating who it's being checked in or checked out and who's doing that action. So I'm going to do that and watch the screen closely. Um, you'll see there's some history tracking that just got going. Okay. Um, so that will automatically change the status. Um, notice I've got the status um, in this black box that's so checked in. Um, and then it says, you know, who did that? And when did they do that? Okay, just to demonstrate that one step further, I will, that's checked in, let's do check out. Notice I've got a date timestamp, the name of the user who did the checkout. That's all automatic. I didn't have to do anything except click this simple green button. Okay, now I'm gonna um, check it out. There, if you were watching closely, you know, it's the history automatically updated. And what's cool is that happened real time in the form. It wasn't waiting for a server side update. So now we're getting that history concept. I've got some tracking and information that tells me historically what's been going on with that item. Now, what I may like to do is get those QR codes and I wanna, I wanna make a sticker. I wanna put it on that device. Some cases, depending on what kind of assets you're tracking, right? All right, so what I can do is go to a different view, right? So I have a view called QR code print. It's just the QR code, because that's all I need, right? And you can do print templates with ultimate form. So we have a print template set up, and if I click on print, it's going to give me a nice simple view, and I can print this out, and I can, you know, 
I can cut that out and tape it on the item, or I could you know make stickers out of it or whatever. Um, but that code helps me tie that item, or I could put it on a shelf in the storeroom or something like that. And now I can walk around with my phone or tablet, and I can do um, updates and in inventory or assets really quickly and easily. Another view to start to fall is the um, all items view. Um, and also I want to demonstrate these, um, these, uh, these email updates. Okay, I mentioned that whenever you get an email, um, this is what you're getting in your email automatically. Hey, there's been an update for this. This is because I'm on the email updates. Um, status is checked out and there's the notes for it. And just click here if you want to go to that item. Okay. So we've got that listener and auto generated notifications. Um, so that's really useful to us as well. Searching. Okay. Uh, when you first start out, you know, right now I just have um, a small number of assets, but clearly this could get into hundreds and then thousands of items ultimately. And so nobody's going to want to sit there and scroll through. We want to find it quickly and easily. All right. So let's look at some search capabilities. Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, text search and I'm going to type in pixel. I know I just had a new pixel phone. There it is. Um, so really simple. I just entered some text and hit enter. Now this is a smart search. It knows to check in all of these key fields. Um, so notice I didn't have to say model equals pixel six or, or the serial number is this. It just knows um, to check all those fields. Another cool thing that's going on automatically, it's assigning a asset ID for me. So I just use the acronym AID dot and then a number. It did that for me automatically. So I have a nice short, unique identifier for the assets, um, which might be useful uh, for reporting or other views. We do additionally have um, an advanced search. I can toggle into that. I could do like a uh, composite search. I could say, um, I want to check things that are in use that are monitors, for example, and I can do compound conditions and you can get more sophisticated. Normally you don't need to do something like that, but it has the capability to do that quite easily. Another way to go about it is a filter search. Um, instead of typing out some text and having kind of a wide open search, I might just want to do something a bit more uh, structured where I say, um, I just need to see the list of, uh, let's say, monitors. Okay. And that's going to automatically do that. I just have to hit the filter button and refresh. It's really fast. There's our monitors. Okay. And then I can just clear when that, or I need to see, um, I need to see stuff that's checked out. Okay. Those are the items that are checked out. I've got a couple of assets checked out. So being able to have a really fast, responsive search capability to very quickly isolate the particular assets that you're looking at, is going to be really vitally important for what you're doing. All right. So how does this all work? Because clearly this doesn't look like out of the box SharePoint, not at all. Um, I'm going to tell you about our tools a little bit. Okay. So when you install ultimate forms, um, into your environment, it's an app and it unlocks this big toolbox as I described it. The first thing that you're going to look at and understand is form designer. Form designer is awesome. I love form designer. There's really no other way I would want to build a custom SharePoint form just because it's fast, it's fluid, it's easy to work with, and I don't have to do any code. In terms of the look and feel, it's really straightforward. Um, I can use this styles interface. I'm not having to do CSS. I can literally just pick from color swatches and I can pick something like that and hit a couple buttons and it changes immediately real time in the interface. Um, and then I can drag and drop my fields around in the form like that. Um, or I could do things like change another number of columns in the layout. You can say it's, you can see what you see is what you get. What's also really nice is I can put rules in this form to make it dynamic. Dynamic meaning it's going to change in terms of what's displayed, depending on uh, whether I'm in the new form or edit form or based on the status um, or based on my role in the organization. You may have an admin section of the form, which is just for management to use. You can hide that according to various rules. 
Just to demonstrate that, I'll show you as an example. I don't want to see the checkout history in the new form. And I made a rule to make it where it's readable just on the event display. And therefore, I don't see it on the new form. And then these buttons, the buttons are very cool. Um, you can have buttons and that's an easy to understand concept for users. So we did that for check-in and check-out. Let's take a look at what's going on here. This button is called an action and save. It just means it's going to update some fields and save out the form. Um, so what I told it is when they click the check-in button, change the status to checked in, change the user to the person in the buy field. Recall that we had user up above. And then the third thing it's going to do is it updates that history. So remember, we have the logging in the bottom. Um, so that's all immediate. If you notice when I click the button, it's just uh, instantaneous. It, it makes the update and then saves out that field data in the form. And checkout works just the same way. So that's all done in Form Designer. Um, it's really cool and fast and easy to use tool. The most important thing you can do after this presentation would be to download and install the trial software. It's not limited at all. Um, it has all the functionality that you can see in this. And also what's cool is we're going to um, upload this complete template, which you can download and install in a site in your own SharePoint environment. So once you've installed our software, you can just go to install business solution and go to webinars. And you can see there are examples from previous webinars. Um, obviously, you can download or install um, any of those. Um, I mentioned the there's also additional parts of this. There's email notifications and alerts. Um, so for example, um, the update one, I'll show you how that works. So I have assets update. What I said is whenever this item is added or modified, I want an email to go out to people in that line. If you remember, there is an email updates to line in the bottom of the form. I just chose that field and then I copied also uh, whoever the user is. And then I was able to define an email template. So I have one called assets update. There it is. And then I just insert the field data by referencing the fields on the side of the form. And I can format that to look however you want. I can do shading or tables or even insert images or things like that. Um, so um, quite easy to work with the email notifications tool. Then there's the workflow. Every business process or tool has some kind of machinery in the background. Depending on certain updates, you have a trigger system and you want particular things to happen. In my case, I need to do an update to make that QR code work. Um, so I have an update list item action. Um, this is easy to work with. Uh, you basically define your trigger. In this case, I want this to happen on add or modify. And then um, I, I do have a reference point to uh, fill that in automatically. So in terms of any of the workflow that you want to do, you can just go in there. You might have noticed that I use the color choice to a certain extent for different statuses and things like that. I really like this. Um, this is something you can use in all your choice fields. I can pick from 250 different icons. Um, I can pick things out. You know, checked in, you check mark, checked out, you know, blue box with arrow. So you can make those choice fields um, look a lot better. Um, so that's just a feature that I like. Um, print and export. Um, I have a QR code print. Um, and also QR code item um, that'll output to PDF or Word or Excel or any, any kind of thing I want. In this case, I just want to use print, but um, those capabilities are nice to take advantage of. And then I showed you the uh, search and filters set up. Um, quite easy to set up. All I had to do is define this uh, list search. I said, oh, just uh, search assets, um, use the search view, simple mode, and then I have some checkbox options and things like that. Um, that's really all it had to do. And then I just was able to have the web part on the page. All right. Um, so those are kind of the key features and how it's set up. Uh, like I say, that you'll be able to download the template. Um, I want to kind of talk about next steps and more. So if you go into the InfoWise website, to get our software, just click on the orange quick start button. And um, like I said, you can download a trial. It'll run for 30 days. And that has all the functionality um, that you need. So just click on the orange button. It'll ask you whether you're doing, um, you know, SharePoint online or on-premise, and then it'll give you the right 
stall package, depending on what that is. Alternatively, um, if, for example, you're not your SharePoint administrator, can't do that immediately, you can also, uh, within a couple of minutes, just um, register on our website. Um, so the online trial is actually in the InfoWise site, um, and that'll let you get immediately into this if you just want to play around with the form builder and, um, you know, there's some delay as far as installing that. That's the most important thing you can do after our presentation. So I hope you take a look at that. Um, if you do get our software, we do include uh, Kickstart training. It's a free two-hour training um, available to everybody. Take a look at that. And then in terms of learning our product, um, in our tutorial section, uh, there's well over 100 articles here that explain all the various features and functions with examples. In particular, the Getting Started section helps out a lot. It shows you what to do. If you're curious about other types of solutions, you can look at our webinar section and uh, there's all kinds of different cool things that you can build uh, with these tools. Um, so you can browse through that and uh, it's likely that you'll find something that you either want to build or improve upon um, in your own organization. So be sure to browse through there and you can see um, other information on things that we have. All right. so. Let's do this. I'm going to go to uh, the questions, we'll answer a couple of those, and we'll do a drawing for sure. And after that, we're gonna talk about another cool tool, which is um, the um, SharePoint dashboards tool. All right, so give me a second um, and um, I'll browse through our questions. All right, so um, there's some questions basically about additional features or functions. So for example, somebody asked about maintenance information, calibration dates, et cetera. It's really not limited. You can add as many attributes as you want in there. I picked out some common ones. You saw that I had the serial number, um, the status, make model, things like that. Um, it's really just a simple matter of adding more fields to your SharePoint list. Um, so if there are other attributes that you want to track, you would just come into the form designer tool and I do things like create new column. Um, so if I wanted to do something like have a field called calibration date, I just come in here and pick date and I'd say calibration date. Um, whether or not I want to include the time, I can create the field and I can just drag it right out into the form. Um, so that's entirely up to you. So it's important to understand this is not a canned solution. This is fluid and flexible, can be adapted and built according to whatever you want to do. Um, it was asked if you can take a picture on mobile and add it as an image. 100% you can. Uh, it's hard for me to demonstrate that on the presentation. Um, on my phone, I can pull up the same form that you saw me look at. And if I tap on that first field for picture, it will either let me browse the image on my phone or I can click a button to open the camera app on the phone. And you can uh, tap a button, take the picture with the camera on your phone, and it will save directly to SharePoint. Very straightforward. Um, can you put them on stickers? Yeah, there are devices you can buy. Um, that's outside the scope of our webinar, but you can buy a sticker printing machine and you can print out those QR codes and slap them on your assets. And that would be uh, for sure the way to go with this type of solution. Um, so real straightforward. Um, let's see. Reporting, um, that's additional things you can pull on there. So again, that's really just an expansion on the capabilities of this. Uh, there's a question about licensing for our software. The licensing is based on for SharePoint Online, it's based on user count. So anybody interacting with the solution, um, if you go to our pricing page, it's pretty straightforward. It explains how that works. But basically, you need to determine how many people in your organization will be interacting with that form. Um, so there's not a quote unquote developer license concept. There's not a limit on the number of forms. You can build as many forms as you want. Um, but if you go into our pricing tool, that will help you out. Import capabilities, that's really outside the scope of this presentation, um, but our tool does support um, uh, import and connections to SQL database and things like that. Um, so this is really a very adaptable solution. Every organization has uh, variations on what they want to do with their asset tracking. So you can think of this really as the whole foundation 
where you can begin and you can adapt and add the features and functionality that you want using the Ultimate Form software. Okay, there's a question about on how to customize the cards that I showed. That is what we're coming up on. That's going to be the SharePoint dashboard. So hopefully some of you guys will have time to stick around. I'm going to show you a whole new tool set, um, which is very cool. And um, we're getting ready to do that in just one moment. All right, so um, I'm going to have to circle around to some of these questions later. We had quite a few questions. It doesn't mean that I don't want to answer them. Um, if for any reason you can't stick around or wait for me to answer this in chat, um, I will give you my email address, and I 100% will cover your question completely. You can Any of you guys can reach me at willc at infowisesolutions.com, and um, you can answer questions. So I did promise a shirt drawing. Let's hit that. Um, we'll do that quickly. And then we're going to move on and we're going to talk about um, the SharePoint dashboards tool. Okay. So what I need from you guys is a number from one to a hundred reminder. This is only eligible for people in the U S I cannot mail my shirts to people outside the United States because it costs a ton of money. I'm going to give you guys about 10 more seconds and closest to my number will win a free shirt. Three, two, one. Okay, I've got a winner. It is Scott Kasai. Apologies if I mispronounced your name, Scott. Scott, please email me your shirt size and mailing address, and I will get that shirt out to you today. Uh, that's willc at infowisesolutions.com. All right. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. Um, I hope this is uh, something you like. This video is recorded. It will be posted on YouTube later today. Um, and also this template is going to be uploaded and avail available inside of the Ultimate Forms um, from the main uh, tool screen that I demonstrated. All right. Now we're going to talk about a new tool, um, which most of you probably have never seen before. Um, so let me start from a broad description to help you understand what it is and how you can use it. This is a website, SharePoint-Boards.com. And these are formatting templates that allow you to visualize data and um, you know, present the information in a visual way instead of kind of the plain vanilla uh, list views that SharePoint typically gives you. Um, if you go into our website, um, you're going to see lots of options for templates. You already saw one of them. That was the card template that I showed as part of our presentation for Ultimate Forms. Um, so I'm going to go to that template. The first thing I want to let you know is you can try out. There are actually um, free templates here. Um, if you go in here, uh, we have, uh, let's see how many there are. I think there's uh, about 15 free templates. So you can begin trying out this tool without having to even register or do anything at all. You can just go in here and start playing around with it. Let's start by looking at the asset card template. Um, you have this drop down in the upper left corner. You can just click on that. And this should look familiar to you because this was what was used in the presentation today. How does it work? What you do is uh, modify the controls in the upper left corner and based on the expected fields, in this case, those asset fields, um, it uh, gives you a standard card look, and then I can adjust it. So for example, I can do things like uh, change the background color, and it gives me a preview and shows me what that's going to look like um, before I even move that over to SharePoint. Uh, maybe I want to do a different card width. Um, for example, let's say I want to do wider cards. Um, I can see this real time before I do that. Then also you can pick from themes. Um, so you can uh, try some different, slightly different looks. Um, and then what I can do is just hit the copy button. I just click there. And then in SharePoint, this is what I do. Um, I go to this drop down, and there's an option. And this is for SharePoint Online uh, for modern list views. I go to format, and I just copy, and I'm, I'm just pasting into that. You can see real time it updates and goes to exactly what I set up. And you can tweak it. So maybe I look at that and say, that looks pretty good, but it's not quite how I want it. So I can come back in here, 
say, you know what, I really want to do courier, whatever reason. Um, and I'm going to, I want to have a little more margin uh, between the cards so I can see, say, uh, you know, 20 margin. Um, and I just make those little tweaks, come back over here, and it's just simple copy paste. Paste, save. Um, and then you can see there's, um, you know, a difference in the way that the uh, output looks. What's cool about this is in the preview mode, you see exactly how it's going to turn out. So I can go through some different examples and show you. Um, there are currently 60 templates in here. Um, I keep adding these. They'll, you'll continue to see more and more of these templates um, added. Um, and if you're interested in getting this tool, it's a subscription tool. So um, you continuously get new updates and features. So it follows very much the same pattern as Ultimate Forms. It's a no-code tool. Um, it writes the code for you. Um, so you got this code in the bottom of the form. All you ever have to do is copy and paste. You don't ever have to manipulate that code whatsoever. Um, let's look at some other examples um, just to give you an idea of different things you can build. Okay, so um, here's event cards. You know, if you want to, um, you know, promote events, that type of thing. Um, there's a schedule grid I wanted to show you in particular. I'm just looking for that. Week schedule grid. There it is, it's the last one. <laughs> okay, so when you very first load the template, it gives you uh, like an animated video preview of what that does. Okay, so as soon as I hit stop preview, I'm getting a real-time display. So in this case, this is uh, like a week grid calendar view, um, and I can toggle on Saturday and Sunday and see what that looks like. I can do things like play with the width of the grid. Um, I can change the font size. So before I even get into SharePoint, I can do tweaks on the colors and make things look different um, according to my preferences. Um, and, you know, I, I can play around with that. And as I say, there's built-in theme selectors. So for each template, um, you can um, try different things. And then it's just a matter of copy and paste into the SharePoint list. Two types of formatting um, templates. There are uh, column templates and view templates. As you would expect, the view impacts the entire view, whereas the column is something you can apply to individual columns. Um, probably the one I use most commonly is the um, edit button. And this is just putting an edit button under your form, and you can use different icons for that. Um, I use this all the time because in modern SharePoint views, there's no longer an edit button. And then obviously there's all the corresponding buttons too. What's really cool is you don't have to uh, there's no cost involved. You can use that immediately today. And I can change the text. Um, I can change the font size, um, all those things quite easily. And, um, you know, and also the hover. You know, maybe I want it to look different on the hover. So let's say I want it to look pale green on the hover. So I see exactly what it's going to look like before I do that. And then I just copy and I can paste that over to SharePoint. See that? See that edit button right there? Let's change it just for fun. All right, so let's do let's do different colors. All right, so I'm gonna do, I'll use the theme. Okay, there's a different theme. There's the gray edit button, and um, we'll just go with those settings. So I just copy, and what you do is you go into the header and do format this column, and um, just paste. Select all, paste, save. And you can see it just updates real time. Okay, also the hover effect. Okay, there's other ones as well. You've got buttons for view. Um, there's the view button. And then you can have other things like um, have it go to hyperlink um, or your email, stuff like that. Lots of very cool templates. So the cool thing is you can preview and see exactly what all these things are gonna look like before you do it. QR codes one that's part of the solution. Um, I can adjust the size of that very easily. I can even give it a background if I wanted to. It looks ugly. <laughs> um, I can do whatever I want. So what you can do is actually browse through and take a look at all these different templates. There's some really cool ones. Here's one showing uh, like a gauge. You know, maybe like you'd seen a vehicle or whatever. Um, it shows you a percentage, and I can 
change the background colors on those percentages. Um, so these are ways to make your dashboard views look much more interesting. Um, probably the most valuable part of this are the charting components. Um, so you can do, um, you know, different bar charts, um, either horizontal, horizontal or vertical. Uh, you can do donut charting, that type of thing. Um, then you can do things like Gantt views for scheduling. Um, so these are all capabilities that obviously don't exist um, in SharePoint normally. Um, naturally, Microsoft has a platform called Power BI, but Power BI is a massive platform. Um, generally, um, in most organizations, you have a dedicated developer who does that, and there's a lot of technical um, expertise needed. Um, generally, it's a very involved development process. It's a very heavy platform. This is really on the other end of the spectrum. Very fast, simple, lightweight, um, something you can do immediately to get those visuals that you want and get charts and displays like that. Um, so very straightforward tool, it really doesn't require um, much training or understanding. There is a help section. If you go to the first page under getting started, it tells you just exactly what to do. Like I say, you can try out all those free templates at first. Um, and then, um, like I said, there's, there's actually 16 free templates built in and there's 60 if you purchase the license. In terms of pricing, um, it's uh, quite affordable, I would say, um, compared to some uh, SharePoint options. Um, it depends on the number of users, um, but this is a developer license model, so it's whoever's building the dashboards. Um, so if you only just get one for yourself, um, it's um, you know $348, that's a subscription fee that will cover you for the year. Um, if you have um, another developer or user in your organization that also is going to take advantage of this, it's a lower cost per month per user, but you do need to get an additional license for each person who's going to log in. All right, so let me stop. I'll try to answer questions related to that. Um, there's a question about what's the cost of a specific template. Um, this is not like that. You, It's basically all or nothing. So it's a very inexpensive tool um, as compared to um, other options. Um, but basically, if you pay for the subscription, you gain access to all the templates. So you don't buy an individual template. Um, I just showed the cost um, there. There's a question about that. Um, there's a question about promoted links. Um, you can check that out for yourself, but um, promoted links is a cool one. I'm really glad you brought that up because I wanted to show that one. Um, promoted links is um, here. Um, so this lets you make a uh, little card views. This is something that may be familiar to those of you um, who use this in the old version of SharePoint. Um, I can control the size of those boxes. I can make them bigger or larger. I can control the hover effect, um, stuff like that. Um, so you know it's a gray hover effect. Um, and then I want I can say the hover text color is black. Um, so um, lots of very cool things that lets you make those cool dashboard views. Um, so. I hope that you find that interesting. I am continuing to add to that. Um, so um, uh, you can begin using this today. Like I say, you do not even need to register to get a login or anything like that. You just click on the green getting started button and um, the ones with the green check mark, those are all free. Um, you can use those at no charge. Then later on, if you want, if you browse some of these advanced templates, um, you can, um, you know, decide to go for the professional license and you'll have access to everything. Um, so I hope you like that. I hope you find it interesting. And I hope that you can uh, get into SharePoint dashboards in addition to using Ultimate Forms. Um, so I'm going to end the presentation on the SharePoint dashboards part. I'll come back to the chat interface. And um, at this point, I'm going to stop the um, recording of the video, but we will keep our web session live um, just so I can stick around and try to answer everybody's questions. So thank you, everybody who stayed around for the full presentation. Um, I really appreciate that and I hope that you found it uh, valuable.